My favorite thing about my filming spot is that I'm sitting right next to a window that has a, a pathway and sometimes people walk past it and see me talk to myself. <laughs> Hey pals, Alicia here. I hope you are doing well. And if you're new here, this is the place where we talk about books. Today I'm here to just throw some books at ya. It's getting to the end of the year. I've read a nice mess ton of books this year and starting at the beginning of the year I kept one of those like A to Z uh, book challenges where I would try to read a book that started with every letter of the alphabet and I just checked back on that list uh, the other day and I did it. I read at least one book that starts with every letter of the alphabet. A couple of them are kind of cheats. They're the letters that you would expect. But you know what? It's my list, my rules. So I just have 26 books that I'm going to share with you. So I thought I would try and fit these books into like some sort of genre, like, you know, like the horror A to Z. But I read like pretty multi-genre so I couldn't actually do that so this is just 20, 26 books that I've read and because I have 26 books to share with you and we know that I just talk forever about books I'm going to try and describe each book that I have here in 10 words or less <laughs> so I'm just gonna hold up a book say what it's called give you a little brief uh snippet about it and then my star rating because these also aren't all books that I loved so there's books that I happen to have read that meets that meets the criteria <laughs> so I don't really know what the point of this video is this just like was a really fun list to make I had seen other people make lists like this and I thought it was a fun little challenge like who who doesn't love a scavenger hunt I love a scavenger hunt I love lists so let's just dive in and we'll do the alphabet so for the letter a we've got audition by Ryo Murakami this was published in 2009 in Japanese and then translated into English in 2010. So for audition, widowed father decides to date again, but make it horror. Also, piano wire. <laughs> I gave this three stars. Next up, we've got Black Klansman by Ron Stallworth. This is a memoir that was published in 2018. Black detective in Colorado Springs infiltrates the KKK and fucks them over. This was awesome. I gave this four stars. For C, we've got Cry Your Way Home by Damien Angelica Walters. This was published in 2018. This is a horror short story collection that covers themes of grief, fear, trauma, and family. I gave this four stars. D, The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock, a debut from 2011. This is a southern gothic noir. It's an intricate tapestry of the broken, the ruined, and the disturbed. Four stars. I love this. E! A Lat's Way by Darcy Little Badger. 2020 release. This is a YA story of magic, monsters, social commentary, ghost dogs, and an exploration of Leap and Apache culture. Five stars. F! Forgotten Island by David Sodergren. This is a horror from 2018. This is a summer slasher creature feature with some of the best death scenes I have ever read. Intricate, imaginative, wet deaths. Four stars. G. <laughs> Gutted. Beautiful horror stories edited by Doug Morano and D. Alexander Ward. This is a horror slash dark fiction short story anthology and these stories are all about the beauty in horror and also like beautiful deaths in a way. Uh, I had mixed feelings about this collection. Some of the stories I loved and some of the stories, actually some of the stories by some of like the more well-known authors I, uh, I did not. Uh, I gave this 2.5 stars. H. The House Guest and Other Stories by Amparo de Vila. This is a short story collection from 2018. These are psychological, gothic horror short stories that lean on ambiguous and like paranoid endings. I enjoyed this and I gave this three stars. I. Indian Horse by Richard Wagamese. This is a contemporary fiction story from 2012. This was a contemporary 
masterpiece. We've got themes of colonialism, trauma, uh, healing, indigenous resilience. This had one of the best voices and writing styles I have read maybe ever. I gave this five stars. J. Johnny Appleseed by Joshua Whitehead. This was published in 2018 and possibly was the best book I read this year. Maybe. Might be. This is a two-spirit indigiqueer slice of life story all about the fictional Johnny Appleseed. This is incredible and I loved it and you should read it. Five stars. K. Kim Ji Young, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju. This was published in 2018. This is a feminist manifesto, a banned book in South Korea, and this was a torturous story, a torturous journey, kind of painful and difficult to read, but it's an important story and I appreciated it for the voice that it had and the kind of conversations that it started. I gave this four stars, kind of have mixed feelings about it. L. Last Days by Brian Evanson. This is a novel from 2009. It is a noir detective mystery about an amputation cult with a chaotic neutral protagonist. I loved this so much. This is like a 4.5. This is like a near perfect. Near perfect, but just not quite there. M. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is a 2020 debut. This is a nauseating tale of abuse and the repercussions of that said abuse on survivors. This was a incredibly written debut and this had so much hype around it in 2020, but I am one of the people that thought it lived up to the hype. Maybe even, maybe even more so. This blew me away in a way where I hated reading it, but I also loved it so much. I gave this five stars. N, The Nightmare Room by Chris Sorensen. This is a horror novel from 2018. This is a haunted house story and I will admit I remember nothing else about this. This just seriously did absolutely nothing for me. I gave this two stars. <laughs> oh, we've got Off Season by Jack Ketchum. It's a cannibal home invasion. We've got family. We've got family dinners. We've got shock horror, shock gore we've got band we've got like cut scenes that were taken out and then put back in at the author's uh at the author's request this uh i still haven't rated this book p We've got Pen Pal by Dathan Auerbach. This is a horror novel from 2012. This is almost a, like a creepypasta campfire story of an adult who is going back and trying to make sense of some of the events of his childhood. And I, when I read this, I will admit I wasn't that impressed when I read this and I gave this three stars. However, this is the only book that I have read in the recent past that I can remember that actually gave me nightmares after I had read it. <laughs> and I was so mad because I, I objectively was not super impressed with this when I read it, but it gave me the night creeps. <laughs> Q, and this is where we start cheating. We've got Notes of a Crocodile by Chu Miao Jin. This is a story from 1994. This is an 80s queer, emo live journal. <laughs> this whole, the whole novel is journal entries and this was all about uh, tortured youth, indulgent youth, and the underground queer community in 80s Taipei. I gave this three stars. R. We've got Ring Show by P. J. L. A. Clark. This is a 2020 release. It is a dark historical fantasy that is about some badass women gunslinger slash whiskey runners who are killing KKK monsters with their magic weapons. I love this and this is a high four star read. S. We've got the subtweet by Vivek Shreya. This is a 2020 release. It is a contemporary slice of life novel unpacking the modern indie music scene with a focus on women of color. This is very current. It's very uh, online and I absolutely love this. It also has a soundtrack. So a book with a soundtrack, how can you go wrong? I give this four stars. 
T. Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. This is a 2020 dystopian speculative fiction story about a world where animal meat has become inedible and poisonous. So humans, instead of like changing course, have just decided to eat humans instead. This has a lot of social commentary and it is disgusting. <laughs> I gave this four stars. So for you, Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. And this is weird that this one came out right after Tinder is the Flesh because they are actually quite similar. This one also has conversations about the ethics of farming, the ethics of meat farming. This one uh, is much less uh, like overtly disgusting though. This one's a much more like strange and ethereal and a little bit, and a little bit beautiful. I, uh, this one had me, uh, you know, I was like, huh after I finished this one. And I think I'm still kind of like stewing about it. I gave this four stars. V, The Vegetarian by Han Kang. This was from 2016. This was the winner of the International Booker Prize. And this is a beautiful, brutal, almost erotic fever dream. This is a disturbing story, but I absolutely loved it. Uh, there are flower butts in it. And I gave this four stars. I loved it. W. We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This is a mystery, ethereal, gothic horror from 1962. This has one of the most intoxicating uh, protagonists I have ever read. This is about family. This is about witchcraft. This is about murder. This is just a beautiful and spooky read. I gave this four stars. X. We've got another cheat. We've got Exhalation by Ted Chang. Speculative fiction, science fiction, short stories. Ted Chang is a master. These are stories that are for fans of Black Mirror, but much more nuanced and compassionate. We are covering themes of technology and human behavior, sometimes even religion. Uh, Ted Chang stories really make you think. I gave this four stars. Why? We've got The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. This is from 2009. This is a contemporary novella that is about math. It's about baseball. It's about friendship and family and compassion. This is a beautiful story that I feel like I could sum up with the, the smiley face emoji. I gave this four stars. And finally, for the letter Z, we've got Pride by E.B. Zaboy. This is from 2018 and is a Pride and Prejudice remix that as well as exploring themes of classism, also explores gentrification in New York. This was fun and sweet and just a nice, a nice little time. I gave this three stars. So there you have it, pals. There was a journey of 26 books that I read this year that conveniently fit within <laughs> the alphabet. <laughs> so let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought. Let me know if you want to read any of these books and we can chat about it. Thanks again for being here, pals. I absolutely love talking about books with you all. So take care out there, stay safe, stay spooky, and until next time, see you, pals!